So we're gonna start talking about probability rules, two-way tables, and Venn diagrams. Today, really, we're focusing on probability rules and uh, something called mutual exclusivity. We'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. So a probability model. Probability model describes a chance process and includes two important things. The first thing it includes is the set of all possible outcomes. The set of all possible outcomes, and that is called the sample space. The sample space. It has a notation of a capital S. If you see a capital S, that means you are talking about the sample space. Also in a probability model, you're gonna have the probability of each of the outcomes. So we're gonna make a probability model for flipping a coin. So the first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need the sample space, and then we're gonna need the probability of each of the outcomes in the sample space. So, when I flip a coin, what are my options? Heads or tails. There's your sample space. Your sample space is heads or tails. When I flip a coin, what's the probability I get heads? One half or 50%. What's the probability I get tails? One half or 50%. This is the probability model for flipping a coin. Now, make one for rolling a die. Should be easy enough. You're gonna need the sample space, which is the list of each outcome, and you're gonna need the probability for each of those outcomes. What is the sample space when you roll a die? One, two, three, four, five, six. And what is the probability of each of those outcomes? One, six. So that's a really great question. Uh, no, you don't always have to do fractions. However, this w probability is the only place in stats that you will see fractions. You will see decimals. There will be times that we will use decimals. So yeah, I very easily could have put 0.5 and 0.5 here, and that would have been fine. But like 1 sixth and 1 sixth, and like when you start having repeated decimals, we kind of prefer the fraction instead. So this is kind of one of those times where you might see either one. So these, these are probability models, one for flipping a coin, one for rolling a die. Any questions? Well awesome. Moving along then, an event. A probability event is any collection of outcomes from some chance process. It is basically a subset of a sample space. It's usually like, what's the probability of heads? Well, heads would be the event. Okay, so it's just basically what's probably one of the things happening. We do use capital letters for events. So if I was trying to write in mathematical notation the probability of event A, then I would write a capital P and then an A in parentheses. That is not read like P of A. You know, you guys are used to seeing F of X. This is not read that way. It is literally read probability of A. You know that it's probability because you're in the probability section of whatever the question might be. So probability of A, that's how you read that notation. Um, all right, let's look at this example. In a dice rolling example, suppose we define event A is that the sum is five. Okay. Now, before we continue, do you guys know if I roll two dice and I add them up, how many different options are there for the outcomes that I might get? 36. Here's how you can tell. When I roll the first die, how many options are there for an outcome? Six. six. When I roll the second die, how many options does it have? Six. six. What is six times six? 36. So there are 36 outcomes that might happen, okay? It's those six times six combinations. So getting a sum of five, here are the options for getting a sum of five. I could get a one and a four, a two and a three, a three and a two, and a four and a one, okay? So those are my options for getting a sum of five. Each of these outcomes has a one in 36 
chance because there's 36 total outcomes. Each of these is one of those 36. And so what is the probability of event A getting a sum of five? Each pair, because I'm summing them, I'm adding them together. So this is a sum of five. This has a one in 36 chance of happening because there's 36 total options when I roll two dice and add them up. So the, the whole sample space is rolling two dice and adding them up, rolling two dice and adding them up. So I'm not looking at each one individually. The only reason I did that was to see how many options are there. All right, so if we have four ways that we can get a sum of five and we have 36 outcomes that are possible, then what is the probability of getting a sum of five? Four out of 36. There are four outcomes that have a sum of five, and there are 36 total outcomes in the sample space. So it's literally that easy. Mm -hmm. um, do you, can you reduce that? Can you reduce four out of 36? To what? One, nine. One out of nine. Perfect. All right, let's define event B is the sum is not five. The sum is not five. What is the probability of B? How did you get 32 out of 36 so quick? Okay, perfect. If four of them have a sum of five, then that means that the rest of them do not have a sum of five. This is one of our basic probability rules called the complement rule that we'll talk about here in a few minutes. So 32 out of 36, which is also equivalent to eight out of nine. Very good. Notice this real quick. What would I get if I added up 32 over 36 and four over 36? What would I get? 36 over 36, which is one. What is eight ninths plus one ninth? Yes. So there's 36 different ways that when I roll two dice and I add them up, there's 36 different outcomes. All right, cool. Yeah. yeah. If we had three dice, then yes, it would be six times six times six. So yeah, six to the third power. All right, now we're gonna imagine flipping a coin three times. We need to write the probability model for this chance uh, process. So we're going to have our sample space and we're going to have the probability of our sample space. Now, when I flip a coin three times, what might happen? Heads or tails each time, each flip. So what could be the overall outcome in three flips of a coin? So I could get heads, heads, heads. What else could I get? I could get heads, tails, heads. What else could I get? Tails, tails, tails. What else could I get? Tails, heads, tails. What else could I get? Tails, tails, heads. What else? Heads, heads, tails. What else? Heads, tails, tails. Did I get them all? Here's how we can tell. How many different options when I flip the coin the first time? Two. Two. How many different options when I flip it the second time? Two. How many different options when I flip it the third time? Two. What is two times two times two? Eight. 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 There should be eight outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're missing one. Tails, tails, tails. No, it's tails, tails. Yep, Lindsay had it. Tails, heads, heads. So there are eight different outcomes. What's the probability of each of these happening? One, eight. One out of eight. Now we're going to answer some questions. Find the probability of each of these events. Event A is getting two or more heads in three flips of a coin. What is the probability of getting two or more heads in three flips of a coin? Is it three eights or four eights? 
Does this one have two or more heads? Does this one? Does this one? This one? This one? This one? This one? This one? He's like drilling off the side or something. Four out of eight. Which is one half. All right. Event B is getting no heads in three flips of a coin. What is the probability of B? One out of eight. There's only one way to get no heads, and that's if you get tails, tails, tails. All right. What's the probability of getting at least one heads in three flips of a coin? Wait, how did you know it was seven out of eight so fast? Okay. So... Several of you recognize that no heads at all is opposite of at least one heads, okay? So at least one is the opposite of none, and we will talk more about that later, uh, but you are absolutely correct. The probability of C here is seven out of eight, okay? Um. Uh, that's kind of how you like show your work ish if it's something easy like this so it's kind of yeah. all right last question here what is the probability of getting two or more heads or no heads how'd you get five over eight Lorenzo I just thought like which ones only have one head because like three coins can only be like three options okay good good so counting them up uh, yep so look Two or more heads or no heads at all. I can just kind of go across and see which ones those are. Here's another way you can do it. What's the probability of two or more heads? We actually found that already. That was four eighths. What's the probability of no heads at all? We found that as one eighth. So what can I do with these? I could just add those up and get the answer. Now this only works because of the fact that they have no outcomes in common. And I'm gonna give you guys what that's called here in just a minute. But I do wanna also show you guys some notation that you may have never seen before. Maybe you have, I don't know. The probability of A or B. So the or, the or in math, you use a union symbol which is basically a U, like a capital U without the tail. So the probability of A or B. Because of the fact that these two things do not overlap, they have no outcomes in common, then all we had to do was take the probability of A and add the probability of B. And you'll see that written as one of the rules here in just a second. Okay. Cool, cool? Cool. So you guys, in just that very short little amount of time, uh, 12 minutes, you have used five probability rules, the five basic rules of probability. You've used five of them, or all five of these already. So the first one is that for any event... For any event A, the probability of A is between 0 and 1 inclusive, meaning that for any event, any chance process event, the probability needs to be between 0 and 1. It can be 0. When will I get a probability of 0? If it's impossible and can never happen. It can be one. When will I get a probability of one? It will always happen. It's guaranteed. It's certain to happen every single time. No other option is going to happen. Okay? So I can have a probability of zero and one. It doesn't happen very often, but I can. Okay? Um, but if you guys are doing a probability problem and you get a, a probability of like nine over eight, you should probably go, whoa. That's not possible because you just got a probability bigger than one. You cannot get a probability bigger than one. Okay. All right. Number two. For any sample space, for any sample space S, the probability of S equals exactly one. 
<clears throat> what that is basically say, stating is that if you have all of the outcomes listed and you add all of the probabilities of each of the outcomes, you should get exactly one. And we're going to use this to prove legitimate probability models. And then the third one, when all outcomes are equally likely, then the probability of A equals the number of outcomes of A divided by the total number of outcomes in S, which is the sample space. The probability of A is the number of outcomes of A divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space S. Now you guys, that is a very fancy looking wordy formula for something you already did, okay? When we did, what is the probability of the sum being five, okay? We said there were four different ways for the sum to be five over a total of 36 in the sample space. So we've already done this. This is just the formula behind what we already did. All right, number four, the complement rule. What does that sound like? Sounds like we need to be nice to our probabilities, right? The complement rule, you've already used this. The probability of A complement. So that little C is up in like where the exponents usually are. Literally the way I would read that notation is the probability of A complement. The probability of A complement equals one minus the probability of A. This is the rule that you guys used without probably knowing the name of it. Whenever you said, oh, well, if that one is 4 out of 36, then that one has to be 32 out of 36. Because you knew it was opposites of each other. Okay? So this is the complement rule. And then the final one is this rule we just talked about at the end. This is the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive events. And that is the probability of A or B. Do you guys remember the notation for A or B? It's a big old fat U, right? Uh huh. So this is probably A union B or or B. I just have to take the probability of A and I add the probability of B. When you guys are doing probability and you hear the word or, you should think addition. When you hear the word or in probability, you should think addition. Okay? Now, this is the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. As long as two events are mutually exclusive, or three or five or ten, whatever, however many events you have, as long as they are mutually exclusive, you can just add them up. And don't have to worry about it. What do we do if, they're not? if they're not mutually exclusive, then you'll have to come back tomorrow so I can show you what to do. But for today, they will be. All right, so before we continue, do you have any questions about any of these rules? Yes. Can you always define like, mutually exclusive? Now I think we should define mutually exclusive. What does it mean for two events to be mutually exclusive? Look at you. Two events are mutually exclusive if they do not overlap, also known as share outcomes. So what this means is if A and B are mutually exclusive, 
they cannot occur at same time in a single trial. I'm going to give you guys lots of examples now. So, two events that are mutually exclusive. Rolling a two and an odd number on a die. Can I, in one roll, roll a two and an odd number? No, because no, two is not odd. So those two events, rolling a two and rolling an odd number, are mutually exclusive. They cannot occur at the same time in a single roll, okay? Um, how familiar are you guys with a deck of cards? What are, the, what are the two colors in a deck of cards? Red and black. What are the suits in a deck of cards? Diamonds, hearts, spades, and clubs, okay? What color are diamonds? What color are hearts, spades? I found this on the web. Oh, we're playing poker. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, what did I mean? Oh, clubs are, are black. Spades are black. Okay, cool. So here's some mutually exclusive events. Picking a heart and a black card. I cannot, in a standard deck of cards, get a black heart because they don't exist in a standard deck of cards, okay? Uh, give me some other things that are mutually exclusive. Uh. <laughs> Being alive and dead. You cannot be both alive and dead at the same time. Some of you are like, but I'm alive, I'm just dead inside. No, you're not. You're alive. What? True. Okay, so I cannot ride a roller coaster that requires a five foot height if I am four foot tall. Good, good. <laughs> yeah, it used to be. Uh, <coughs> uh, being a boy and a girl. We're going to say that that is mutually exclusive. Uh, being, being born a male and having a child naturally. You cannot do that at the same time. Being born a male and actually. Being born a male and being pregnant at some point in your life. Can't do that. Um, yeah. So we'll leave it at that. Oh, here's one that I learned today. You ready? Breathing. Like actively breathing and swallowing. Did you know you cannot actively be taking a breath and swallow at the same time? You are all trying it right now, and that's totally fine. You should. You can't do it. Keeping your eyes open and sneezing. These are mutually exclusive events. I know. Y'all are all trying it. It's funny. Okay. Uh, here's an example. Let's look at this example. AP exam scores. Yeah. Let's start talking about those. The probability of receiving a 1 through 5 on the 2021 AP statistics exam are recorded in the following probability model. Now, before we continue, I want to ask you a couple questions to make sure you know how to read this thing. What is the probability that a student took the 2021 AP stats exam and they got a 5? 
12.6% or 12.6%. What's the probability they took the 2021 AP Stats exam and got a one? That's harsh, isn't it? All right, very good. So you guys understand how to read this? Perfect. Show that this is a legitimate probability model. To show something is a legitimate probability model, you have to notate two things. Number one, are all outcomes listed? If I take the 2021 AP Stats exam, I actually go and take it and open it and whatever, then are all of the possible options of scores listed? Yes. Yes, so all I have to do here is write, all outcomes are listed. So that one's good. And then the other thing I have to show is that if I add up all the probabilities, I would get exactly one. So do all of those numbers add up to exactly one? <laughs> Y'all are so trusting. I'm like, you know, come on, follow me into the woods in the dark places. And you're like, okay, let's go. We're here. Uh, yes, you guys, this is one. But in the future, make sure you verify that, okay? So all probabilities add up to one. All probabilities add up to one. All right. Are these events mutually exclusive? Yes. Yes. You can't get two or four. Perfect. So, yes, a single exam only gets one score. Now I'm not, I know some of you have taken the BC stats, or B, not BC stats, BC calc exam, and there's like the sub score and blah, 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 but that's different. Uh, we're talking about just a, just one score. Okay, do math. Find the probability that a chosen student scored a three or better. So this is the probability that a student passed the AP stats exam on 2021. How am I gonna do this problem? I just have to add up the probabilities of three, four, and five. So the probability of a three or better is the probability of a three plus the probability of a four plus the probability of a five. Now, can I just straight add them up? Is that okay? Why is it okay? Because they are mutually exclusive, I can just straight add them. So. I'm just going to add up the probability of a 3, the probability of a 4, and the probability of a 5. And you guys are going to tell me what the answer is. They are mutually exclusive because I can only get one exam score in a single trial. What do you get when you add these up? 0.577, anybody else agree? Yep. Anybody agree? Going once, going twice? Sold. I have a question before we continue. Is there any other way to do this problem? Yes. How? Add up one and two and minus one. I could add up one and two and subtract that from one. Why? Why would you? I don't know, but you could. I'm just saying you could. Okay. Wait, but how do you know that that math already works out? I'm just saying. Well, Ryan's one of them, like, weird kids that knows. He's, he's not that wow. weird. Wow. wow. All right. All right. Cool. Let's look at this example. We don't have a chart. Oh, no. We can't do it. Ah! Yes, we can. Here we go. Choose an American adult at random. Two events. A, the person has a cholesterol level of 240 milligrams per deciliter of blood or above, and that is considered high cholesterol, or B, is the event, or the person has a cholesterol level of 200 to 239, and that is considered borderline high cholesterol. According to the American Heart Association, the probability of A, high cholesterol, is 0.16. The probability of B, borderline high, is 0.29. Ladies and gentlemen, before we continue, do we have the entire sample space? We do not. How do you know that? Because you're missing low medium. <laughs> when I add those two numbers up, I don't get a one. So I don't have the full sample space. But that's okay for the moment. I don't need it just yet. 
Explain why these events are mutually exclusive. Why is it that these two events are mutually exclusive? Yeah, when you guys get your cholesterol checked as you continue to get older, you will get it checked and you will get one number back, and that's it. And you will be put into a category. Hopefully it's not one of these two, but you will be put into a category based on that one number. So you cannot be both high cholesterol and borderline high cholesterol, okay? So a single test result cannot be both high and borderline high. Mutually exclusive cannot happen at the same time in a single trial. Okay? Cool, cool? So there can't be two results for one? Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, let's look at part B. Part B says, tell me in plain language, what is the probability of A or B? What does that mean in normal people words in context of this problem? Yeah, what's the chance of high cholesterol or borderline high cholesterol? Okay, that's what it would mean. Okay, so what is chance of high or borderline high cholesterol? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to actually find the probability of A or B. Do you guys remember the notation? Probability of A union B. That's your notation. Now, when you see that, you can say or. And all we have to do, you guys, is add the probability of A plus the probability of B because... They are mutually exclusive. This is okay. Only because I know that they are mutually exclusive is it okay for me to just add them up. So what is the probability of A plus probability of B? 0. 0.16 plus 0. 0.29, which equals? <laughs> 0. 0.45. All right, ladies and gentlemen. And now we have the final piece of the puzzle. If C is the event that a person chosen has normal cholesterol, so below 200, what is the probability of C? How did you get 0.55, Garrick? Uh, you just subtract uh, 1 minus 0.45. So Garrick said all he did was take 1 and subtract 0.45. What probability rule did he use? The complement the rule. Low cholesterol. Uh, that's... That, that's actually not a thing. Nope. nope. The probability of C equals 1 minus the probability of A or B. And so all we have to do is 1 minus 0. 0.45, which is... Anyone? 0.55. And this used complement rule. No, you don't always have to say what rule you're using or any of that. I'm just doing this just to kind of show you guys when you're using what. No, so just so you guys know, generally speaking, from here down, showing your work from here, 1 minus 0.45, and then answering the question, this would, have get, would get you full credit on a you know, homework or test or quiz or whatever. Um, I am just always going to use all of the notation because I want you guys to get used to seeing it and hearing it at the same time so that you know how to read it when you're doing your work. Okay? Cool, cool? We're done for today. Yay.